Hi Capricorn, welcome to April 2016. In April, for you, it's all about the journey, the inner journey, the inner life, the inner world. Doesn't mean you don't have a lot going on in the external world. Mars, the planet of action and passion and desire, is going retrograde on April 17th. He'll be retrograde until June 29th. Pluto is going retrograde April 18th, and Pluto is in Capricorn, and he will be retrograde until September 26th. Then Mercury takes his turn to retrograde on April 28th, and he will go direct May 22nd. Whenever planets retrograde, it gives you the opportunity to go back over things. And this is important because we can miss steps, we can miss things, and having retrograde cycles gives you the opportunity to finish unfinished business, complete projects, reevaluate your strategies, reevaluate what you're doing reflect and you know analyze how your life is developing this year now with Mars retrograde he's in Sagittarius he'll back into Scorpio uh, next month and I'll talk about that in the May astrology Capricorn forecast but here in April he's in Sagittarius Sagittarius is 12 signs from you so whenever anything's in Sagittarius, it brings you to working behind the scenes, working to finish unfinished business. It also is the area, of, and it is for all of us, we all have a 12th house, of how you get in your own way, how you limit yourself, or even how you can sabotage yourself, sabotage your success or what you want. And so with Mars here, this is an opportunity for you to consciously enter your dreams. You can rebirth yourself as an empowered and whole individual. With Mars here, you want to go deep into your intuitive nature. This is the time to be still and allow the healing energies to come through you. Allow the healing energies of Prime Creator, Source Energy, God or Goddess, and allow it to heal your spirit. This is a time of healing and dreaming and reflecting. Now, I notice personally for me, when Mars is retrograde in my 12th house, I have trouble sleeping. So if you notice that you're being awakened at night or you're having a trouble you know, sleeping, it's Mars because Mars is the planet of energy and he's in the area of dreams he's in the area of working behind the scenes and so it's going to be very much it's going to activate your dream life it's going to activate your dream time and that's why it's so awesome to to uh, you know practice lucidity being lucid in your dreams and, and you can do that before you go to sleep as you can tell your subconscious, I want to remember my dreams, I want to be awake in my dreams, I want to work in my dreams. And if you, if you remember your dreams, and everyone dreams, even if you don't remember them, write them down because you could get a lot of information from source, from your higher self, this cycle through your dreams. So you could get a lot of intuitive insights into your life, where you're going, what you're doing, that comes from your dream space. And you know, we often, and I'm guilty of it too, is, is you know, we're so focused in the world and taking action in the world, making money, achieving goals, relationships, and yet there's a whole inner world. There's a whole inner life. There's inner dimensions. And you can enter those inner dimensions through the 12th house. You can enter your past lives through the 12th house. And so this is a time where there's going to be tremendous work going on with you, but it's ongoing on the inner levels. 
in the inner dimensions. You are so much more than this life. In fact, that much of your causal body fits into this physical form. The baby pinky nail. That's how much of you fits into the body. So your giant causal body is above you and it's gigantic and it's reflective of the great spiritual being you are and so remember that, that it's not just about achieving in the world, accomplishing, making things happen, that there is an inner life that you are participating in, that you are working, involved in, and living in other lives. And so here is the opportunity to pull in those other lives and do what you're here to do. Now the Aries new moon is going to be intense because it's coupled with Uranus being challenged by Pluto and it's in the area of your foundation. So there could be a lot going on in the home around the 7th of April that has to do with uh, family or uh, moving or people moving in, people moving out, children moving out, children moving in, you know. It could be something like that. Venus is there. Venus entered this area on the 5th. And you may be like really involved in uh, painting in your home or redecorating in your home, doing beautiful things in the home to make it uh, comfortable and attractive. And that's awesome. And, you know, with Pluto retrograde in your sign, you want to... Uh, again reevaluate how life is developing for you and how much growth you've done since Pluto went direct in September 2015 right and it's interesting because the eclipses last month are now you know another reflection of what was going on last September and then we'll, the next set of eclipses will happen September 2016 and that's why I always say eclipses can last anywhere from six months to two years and so, so here's an opportunity for you in April to integrate all the growth you did in March as well as all the growth you've done since last September 2015. What wisdom have you gained in your life this last six months, taking you back to fall, right, 2015? How much wisdom have you gained? How much power with Pluto in your sign? Pluto is about power how you own your power, how you nourish and nurture your power, or how you give your power away. And you may be reflecting upon that, of how you could handle certain situations differently so that you feel more empowered and achieving more of what you want. Now Mercury is going to trine Jupiter on the 14th, and this is fantastic because there's this gorgeous grand Earth trine going on with Mercury who entered Taurus on the 5th to Jupiter in Virgo, these are all your sister signs, to Pluto in Capricorn. I love this energy. It comes on really strong after the Aries new moon and it's on for the rest of April and all of May and it is about true love and romance for you, creative self-expression. It's about travel, it's about education, it's about teaching or marketing your products and services to the world and it's all about empowering you. I love this Grand Earth Trine. It is definitely gifts from the gods and it works so well in your astrology. It works so well to benefit you and you'll really start feeling it on the 14th of April but it goes on through the end of April and most of May because when Mercury retrogrades in Taurus on May 22nd, I mean on April 28th until May 22nd, he's camped out in that grand earth trine the whole time. So this is a fantastic energy. And then Venus enters Taurus on the 29th and Taurus rules true love, romance, creative self-expression. The sun enters this area on the 19th. So, love is on for you this month, Capricorn. And it could be someone from your past coming back. 
because Mercury is there and Mercury is going retrograde in the area of true love and romance and so a lover from your past could be coming back or it could be someone from your past lives that you meet anew in this life that you meet up with during this time period. It's very exciting and it could also be someone you travel with or someone who lives at a distance that comes here to be with you or you go there to be with them. Very exciting. Very exciting. That's why you want to do your dream work. You want to do your inner work. You want to look at how you're getting in your own way or hold yourself back so that you can take advantage of this gorgeous earth energy that's strong for you here in April and May. Now, the sun is going to enter Taurus on the 19th, the day after Pluto retrogrades, and then you have the Scorpio full moon on the 22nd. This is a fabulous moon for you. Scorpio sextiles you. Taurus trines you. You're going to love this full moon. There's no challenging aspects to it. The action really is with the mutable signs this year. Yeah, the, the Aries moon is activating Pluto and Uranus, but it's going to like be so quick and so fast that it's like here and then gone again. And, and so it's not really um, the main story going on. The main story is with the mutables. That is the Jupiter and Virgo, the Neptune and Pisces, the Mars and Saturn and Sagittarius. They're making a powerful T-square. And the way out of a T-square is the missing leg. And for you, it's Gemini. It's, for all of us, it's Gemini. But for you, it's, uh, Gemini brings you to uh, your lifestyle and your work habits and your health habits, how you feed yourself mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically, how you create life-work balance, not work-life balance, life-work balance. And so the way out for you of the mutable intensity but again, it's not even harsh for you because Pisces sextiles you. Jupiter trines you. So you're really in a very strong position in regards to these energies. And you're going to be really happy to hear that April, May, and June. Because in May and June, it really kicks into gear. Because Gemini comes on board and then you have a grand square. But again, for you, it's not... Um, it's very supportive to any planets you have in Capricorn. Your Sun in Capricorn, Moon in Capricorn, Rising Capricorn, Mercury Capricorn, Mars in Capricorn, Mars is exalted in Capricorn. And so you are going to be doing very well with this energy. You know, it's like it gets a little hairy for you around the Aries moon where there could be some, you know, fighting going on in the home. Uh, but it qu passes so quickly, it's like you don't even remember it. And then the sun goes into Taurus, your sister sign, and it starts, you know, bringing out time for you to have fun, time for you to play, time for you to uh, be romantic and enjoy the romance of life. And romance isn't just with another person. Romance is just being in love with life, being in love with living, having fun doing nice things for you. And then the Scorpio full moon is in another uh, area of fun. It, it's the area of the love you receive from others. Taurus rules the love you give to others and Scorpio rules the love you receive from others. And so this is about you looking at your goals and your hopes and your wishes and where you're connecting with others and how that's working for you. And it's totally supporting your planets in Capricorn. So you are digging the good vibrations here. You are loving on the Sun in Taurus, the Mercury in Taurus, the Grand Earth Trine, the Scorpio full moon. Even with Mercury retrograde, it's not challenging. I mean, it's going to have its challenges because the devil's always in the details when Mercury retrogrades, but he forms a Grand Earth Trine the whole time he's retrograde. That's gifts from the gods. That's healing. That's opportunity. That's prosperity. That's abundance. And for you, it's in the area of true love and romance and having fun, being playful, being light, seeing the lighter side of life. So you're going to like it. Going into um, April, I mean May, Venus enters Taurus on the 29th. So there's a lot happening in the love area. And this is going on strong uh, going into May. So this is really exciting for you. And so remember that, that life is not about 
you know, getting to the goal, achieving and accomplishing. It's about the process. It's about the journey. And go with the flow. Don't, you know, take your, take your focus off the bottom line. Take your focus on what you're trying to achieve and just be here now and enjoy every day. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy your life. Enjoy what you're doing. Enjoy where you're going. Sacred simplicity. There is a sacredness in simplicity. Simplify your life. Simplify. Less is more. And you're going to have some fun here. And, you know, perhaps, you know, something uh, romantic is stirring. So for those of you looking for love, it's on. Especially uh, this month and next month because Mercury enters this area right away. Right away Mercury goes into the area of true love for you and romance. And then, of course, the sun goes in on the 19th and that really brings the focus. And then next month you'll have the new moon there and that will be like totally amazing and but with the Scorpio moon on the other side of it it's pulling it you know it's pulling on it and it's you know magnifying it and so this is a time for you to have some fun once that Sun you know moves into Taurus you're going to be you know digging those good vibrations enjoying yourself having fun being more playful relaxing more you know, it's time to relax from the intensity of that Pluto-Uranus energy. And, you know, reflect on all the growth you've done since last September. Right? Because you've been doing enormous growth work in your personal life, in your inner world, in your outer world. And I see this as a time for you to kind of just kind of go on vacation from all of that. Or just chillax. Relax into the energy. Flow with the energy. Reflect. Evaluate. Reevaluate. Pull up your personal power, you know, um, and focus on that inner being, the inner life, the inner world, so that you can have more fun, you know, in April and especially May when um, the Taurus New Moon says, Hey, Capricorn, come on out and play. <laughs> come on play and go for it have fun now for those of you already in a relationship this can also be a time where perhaps you're planning a trip together you know like a second honeymoon to Mexico or the Bahamas do it go for it have fun take time to re-energize your personal life and your playful side of life and the money is good you know I love this grand earth trying for everybody the moon in Scorpio you know brings you know the attention to the money you make from the business you own and there's no challenge to that moon or the money you make from the company you work for and so I'm not seeing so much like about money here for you it's it's more about expanding your consciousness through travel, through reflection, through play, through allowing yourself to be creative, to play with your creativity, to allow the creative juices to flow with you. I'm not seeing a big focus in the career area for you. It has more to do with your creative self-expression. It has more to do with um, travel, the inner journey or an outer journey, home, play, having fun, your spiritual side of life, your spiritual development, your spiritual growth. That's where the action is. But it's a good month for you. These next couple of months are going to be beneficial and rich on the inner the inner life is being expanded and grown and developed. So thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for liking, favoring, sharing, and Google plus in my podcast, Capricorn. You're so awesome. Thank you for subscribing. You totally rock. And if you would like for me to take a detailed look at your astrology, it's very easy. The link is below in the show more section.
you go to my astrology page, you purchase a session, upon checkout, you get the link to my schedule, and we're working together. So until next time, Capricorn, take that journey, whether it's on the inner or the outer, or both.